to wait for five minutes, no more than five minutes. If you can bear with us for five minutes, we will start within five minutes. start the session now. Uh, good afternoon. This is uh, workshop number 51, how you take your internet further. I am Östen Fronberg, chairman of the Internet Society in Sweden, Stockholm, and I am here to lead this session for ISOC ECC, which is a coordination uh, organization instead of uh, Christopher Wilkinson, who is the chairman of the ISOC ECC that couldn't come today. We are four chapters that will present our experience on the internet development in our countries. And we will also uh, talk a little bit about how we have planned for the future. Uh, the agenda uh, is on the screen. We will use, I will use five minutes for introduction, and then we have four speakers uh, from Sweden, from Italy, from Bulgaria, and from Ecuador that will make the presentations from their respective countries. Then we will have 15 minutes for questions and answer, and then 10 minutes at the end for a summing up. Uh, we come from the European Union, uh, which is a number of countries. It expands uh, all the time. It started out for a few countries. Now it's over almost 30 countries in Europe that sort of are the European Union. Uh, the IGF secretary just asked us to combine efforts. So we have included in our presentation ISOC from Ecuador, as you see on the right red spot on the screen there. But we will make presentation from Sweden, which is a country north up with, with snow and Father Christmas and everything. And we will also have speeches from Italy, which is a country south. And uh, so we have been representing the north part and the south part of, of um, the Europe. And we also will represent the Eastern European part that comes from Bulgaria. Uh, ISOC ECC is a coordination organization for all the chapters. And the chapters are by country. You see Belgium, Norway, uh, Portugal, and so on. So these are 14 different countries and chapters that ISOC ECC kind of holds together. And they coordinate various activities that we do in Europe. Uh, they also defend the ISOC principles. ISOC has seven principles that they look into and see that we follow those. And they also work very much with the European Union that has an organization in Brussels, central of Europe, though. Uh, they also promote uh, various projects, and uh, they have a dialogue with ISOC and uh, the European Union. They also help to educate uh, people, run uh, seminars and other things, and have talks to industry and researchers. They will, the aims for ISOC ECC is to increase the professionalism in the memberships among the countries, among the chapters. Uh, they are also looking into multilingual list. Uh, I would say Europe is, a, is a, an organization, or ICC is an organization with a tremendous number of, of languages. Every country has its own language. Some countries have several languages. So. This is a place where all the languages has grown one at one at a time. Uh, we also have the CCTLDs. Most of these countries have their own .sc, .be, and so on and so forth. And we have cooperation with the CCTLDs and help one another and also get some fundings for certain projects. Uh, we share also some uh, policy interests. 
being that the internet should be open, the peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, bottom-up structure, that are a common uh, interest that we have, that we, we share and we sort of help one another doing papers on that. We also have a, a top domain for Europe called the .eu, and ISOC ECC has one representative on the, on the board of .eu, that is uh, Euridist organization, the last line on the screen there, that runs the operation, and they have run it for five years, and they will run it for another five years, and they have over two million domain names at the, at the moment. Uh, all the uh, speakers will come from various chapters, and it's, uh, there's a number of chapters in the world. As you heard uh, this afternoon, Lynn Santlamore, who is the CEO of the whole organization, said that we are over 80 chapters in, in all of the world, and altogether 28,000 members in ISOC. Uh, ISOC has uh, a word from what it stands for, that is, Internet is for all. And it was Vin Cerf, one of the Internet's father, that, that made that statement. And I think that is one statement we look for. Uh, you who listen to this can, can create your own chapter or take contact with the chapter in your country. If you don't have a chapter in your country, you just take 25 people that you think are good in Internet. And you can then form a chapter and send that material to ISOC. Dot org, and, and then you have a chapter, and you can be part of this organization. This afternoon, there will be four speakers. First, I will do the speech myself from ISOC Sweden, and I will talk about how we developed Internet in Sweden, and I will also talk about a national project that we call uh, Inter uh, Ambience Sweden that would put Sweden as a prominent internet nation in year 2015. Stefano Trumpi, who sits behind me in the center, he is from Italy, and he will talk about the Italian community uh, and also the international aspects. He will also cover some grounds on what happened in Europe in general. Jörg Shadovsky will represent Bulgaria. Uh, he will not make a PowerPoint presentation. He will talk from his manuscript, but he will talk about uh, Bulgaria and how they developed the policy in, in Bulgaria. The last speaker is Anita Sanchez from Ecuador. She will make her speech in Spanish, but we will have one of her colleagues uh, translated what he, she will be saying in, into English. Her pictures will be in English, but she, her talk will be in Spanish. This is the presentation on ISOC in Sweden, the vision for Sweden. And uh, I have a number of slides, and as you see the content, I will start with the background, of course. I will talk a little bit about Sweden, what it is, and where, where it is, and, and how large it is. I will talk about the methods. I will also go into three pictures on how we did this Internet Future project. First of all, Sweden is like India, you can say. It's, it's fairly long and not so wide. We are about 3,000 kilometers long and about 500 kilometers wide. Uh, there is uh, 9 million people in population, and we have a gross, gross national product of $450 billion US. And that turns out to be 36,000 36, dollars per person. If you compare this to the number in India, our, our number is about 10 times as much as in India. Uh, we have a constituent monarchy. Uh, we have a king and a queen, and we have had that for a thousand years. And we still have that, and the people like that kind of organization we have in Sweden. But we do also have 24 regions that are very independent, uh, and these regions um, uh, run their local states. 
and uh, that is how Sweden is organized. So you cannot from the top tell the, an organization in Sweden what to do. The very, very regi regional uh, governments uh, decide what to do and, and they then uh, do what they are doing. Uh, Sweden exports uh, most electronic and uh, telecommunication products, but also machinery and passenger cars and, and medicine. And a few uh, uh, companies that you might have heard of is Volvo, who makes the cars, now belong to Ford. Uh, we have Electrolux, who makes uh, home products. We have Ericsson, that makes telephone and communication systems, and IKEA, who make furniture. And, and I think IKEA is represented almost in every country in the world. Uh, we, do, we do also have a great uh, person in the nation called uh, Alfred Nobel, who was donating his fortune to the Nobel Stiftelsen, and we then have a Nobel Prize uh, every year, and that is the 10th of December. The king is giving the prize winners their prizes um, on the 10th of December every year. Uh, the internet footprint in Sweden is uh, quite uh, interesting. We have lots of ADSL. That's a copper uh, system that we can run up to 24 megabits on short haul. We also have a quite large cable system. It's about 17% are connected to cable system. And it's about the same amount that runs on fiber. We have fiber for 16%. And 12% others, that could be, that could be um, uh, Wi-Fi, it could be uh, satellite communication and others. And uh, from, from home, every home is connected almost. So we have 82% of all the people from age 16 to 74 are connected to the internet. And the daily use uh, is about 62% according to VII, which is a national uh, organization that make these numbers. And when we look at the rank between various countries, Sweden turned out to be number one according to the World Information Society report in 2007 when it comes to usage of the internet. We do also have a number of initiatives and projects. In uh, 2000 to 2005, we have what we call the PC reform, meaning that people could buy a PC for less money and deduct it from their taxes. We also have something we call easy surfing, and that is an awareness of what, is, what danger do you have out there? You know, what could you do, what you cannot do? And, and various phishing and spams and problems like that, that the whole organization should be aware of that. We do also, between 2003 and 2006, have an IT strategic group that was reporting to the minister. And one person very f well known to most of you is Patrick Feldstrom, who was part of that organization. And also our FCC, called the PTS here, came up in, in uh, a report in 2007. And that was the broadband for Sweden in 2010. And the last line is the project that where I'm project leader. I can sp speak a lot on that. That's the EVA project on Internet Fortsight and Ambient Sweden. And when I say EVA, that, that's, the, that's the Royal Academy of Engineering uh, who runs that project. And we promised uh, the IDF secretaries to talk a little bit about the method we have used to look into the future. So, you can see what were our, our experience. Uh, as we heard uh, on the opening session, we w took a very, very broad scheme on that, and uh, we invited all the stakeholder holders to be part of this project. And we started sort of looking into 75 various uh, projects and uh, various topics and uh, see what they could uh, have in mind. And then we had three panels that were analyzing these 70 projects. There was one user panel, there was one infrastructure panel, of course, and a third one that looked into, uh, into security uh, matters. And they come up with 10 focus topics. And if we were to do these 10 focus topics, we would then make Sweden to become an important internet nation by year 2015. So that was done in, in April this year. 
And what did we do then? Of course, as you uh, normally do, you start another project called the implementation of these 10 projects. And that is where I'm running as a project leader. We call that the Ambient Sweden. And it runs from now until the end of 2009. And we have said, if we can implement 75 of those 10 projects being seven and a half uh, topic, we, we would be very, very happy. And uh, I will just read this, uh, say a little bit about every 10 of those, so you have a little feeling of what, what this project would look like. A new opportunity in business sector, of course, it, it's to increase the usage in the, in the business sector. And raise the level T of trust. Trust is very important. If, if you should have a successful internet, you have to have trust with the people that uses this. A common market, we have the infrastructure in the future, number four, that is to have a 100 megabit internet uh, running. And we were looking into new, uh, new um, frequencies to build such a network, since our country is quite long. Um, we, have, we will increase the business climate, making it more easy for people to start businesses on internet in Sweden. We have also looked into the digital gap, but we have changed that and said we will rather talk about a digital ladder. And the digital ladder is a ladder you can climb, and the digital ladder goes up to the sky. And, and you can, any steps you take on the digital ladder is good because you then learn more about the internet. And the eighth, I would stress on that, that's the training in, in uh, having internet in schools for children. We think we should use the school system to help um, to develop the knowledge and increase the knowledge uh, of internet in Sweden. And here's a picture, uh, i just take one example. This is the IT-based uh, teaching in school. And uh, we see that kids learn from one another, and they learn from their older brothers and sisters, and the, the teacher is kind of behind here, and they get a little afraid for starting doing internet in classrooms. So we have to, we have to give the teachers more uh, knowledge so they would run the classes. We will also teach uh, internet as a technical technology part, but we will also use internet in physics and in mathematics and in, in chemistry and even in literature, how you write and, and how you communicate, how you make an essay and all that. And the, the last picture I have is to say, yes, we will run this project for 15 months and uh, we will benchmark our results amongst other countries and uh, we have resources from industry, government, and from the operators. And I would... Uh, 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 if you want more information, you can uh, you can uh, look into these web pages. Now there is there is a number of uh, material I have put out and at the stand there. You can take one uh, each as you go, uh, and that is the, that is that is the material from this project. And the brochures are on on the couch there. Now I would like to turn into the next speaker, which is Stefan Trumpy, and I will. You see, do you want do you want to run from here? Okay. Uh, while I'm talking, uh, I will uh, change so he gets uh, his pictures on the screen. Let's see. I think it's there. two computers, <laughs> don't be afraid. So I, I wonder how many of you are involved uh, in uh, ISOC chapters and how many are not. So 
Uh, my scope here and the scope of this seminar is uh, to try to show how the ISOC chapters, certain ISOC chapters are contributing to the process of uh, IGF and contributing to possibly his success. And uh, the, theme today, the theme today is uh, how we see the evolution of the Internet. My name is Stefano Trumpi, I'm the chair of uh, Italy's chapter of ISOC. And here are a few data that you can see. The uh, population in Italy is uh, 58 million point something. Internet user estimated 33 million. This means 58% uh, of the population is using the Internet. And just uh, some other data just uh, here. Uh, registered users under .it are 1.6 million, and then we estimate that under .com, .net, we have uh, about 1 million. This means that uh, each, uh, there is one name for every 13 users, let's say. I, I say 13.5, that is the actual <laughs> division of the two numbers. So, uh, something about uh, the ISOC chapter. First of all, uh, I'm a, a researcher of the National Council for Research in Italy, and uh, CNR was one of the funding members of ISOC in 1992-93. Uh, uh, Italy's chapter was funded in the year 2000. And uh, what I, I want here to, to say is uh, w what chapters uh, can actually do for the uh, Internet of the future. First of all, let me say that uh, the strength of the chapters is connected to the, uh, to the set of individual members that are participating and in many cases are working only voluntarily. And we have uh, in our chapter representation from the users, representation from private sector, representation from professionals, especially lawyers, and then uh, governments and local administrations, research and academia. So, and then we have some organizational members that are covering basically the categories that I mentioned before. So the chapters are a good uh, implementation of the so-called uh, multi-stakeholder uh, concept that uh, I had the, the word uh, interesting, multi-stakeholderism. That is, uh, of course, one of the basic characteristics of uh, the IGF. And uh, so, uh, and the model of the chapters is, of course, the model of uh, the ISOC.org uh, that created uh, all the chapters uh, or contributed to the formation of the chapters. Um, so, uh, if we look at, at the future of the internet, uh, the chapter should uh, maintain and develop sensors uh, to monitor the evolution of the network. And uh, they should be able to analyze these evolutions and then to provide uh, proposals. Uh, chapters are not being built, are, are not able, let's say, to implement the evolutions because, uh, as I say, they are based on uh, uh, voluntary work of people that are working in other sectors. Uh, but uh, their role is still important because uh, the scope of the chapters is to uh, spread the internet culture, I mean the definition on how the system, internet system, it evolves. And, uh, and then to participate in uh, providing ideas and uh, participating in uh, also the implementation of these ideas. But uh, basically chapters are not there for doing, let's say, but uh, for con collecting the opinion of the local internet community and try to understand what, is, uh, what has to be done in different uh, arguments. And uh, so uh, 
talking about the uh, European um, uh, scene and the European Union, uh, there is a, a large project uh, called the Internet of the Future that is uh, launched in the uh, seventh framework program by the European Commission. And that is trying to define the, the future of the network, in particular of the internet, uh, looking at, uh, of course, the physical infrastructure, and uh, looking basically also at the internet of services. Uh, internet of services is a very important aspect, uh, and uh, also if it's, it is still called the network. But uh, uh, this, uh, the evolution of the new services will have uh, an impact on the social life of all the users. And this is a very important uh, aspect. Inside the, the Internet of Services, uh, for those of you that uh, follow the discussions, uh, especially in Europe, there is also the, the new Internet of Things, the connection of, of the network to not only to personal computers of the users, but to uh, things of various nature connected by sensors. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, the last uh, point uh, that is uh, very important is the internet governance, is uh, what we are uh, doing here, what we want to learn, and uh, internet governance is uh, a multidisciplinary uh, uh, sector that also deserves some research, let's say because uh, uh, the original internet was uh, connected especially to all the techies that uh, were able to implement it, to develop services and so on. But today uh, we, um, uh, we face a growing attention of the sociologists, of the legal people, and uh, economic uh, sector, and so on. So this is something to which we have to confront. And uh, so uh, going in this line, uh, Italy's chapter was uh, instrumental in the constitution of IGF Italy. In Europe, we already had uh, one uh, IGF uh, constituted in UK, and uh, uh, Italy was the second, but uh, there are other countries that are doing something simi similar to that. That is, trying to uh, assemble the local internet community, including all the uh, personalities I was mentioning before, uh, technical people, lawyers, sociologists, and so, and so on. So uh, we uh, obtained the uh, blessing of the Minister of Public Administration and the Governor of S Sardinia region where the meeting uh, was held uh, about one month ago. And uh, so it is important also to know what, what do we in intend to do uh, with this uh, uh, local IGFs. Uh, what we intend to do is uh, to progress in this uh, multi-stakeholderism I, I was mentioning before. So, and uh, uh, we don't want to create something, a new organization or something with statutes and things like that, but simply to adopt the model of IGF, that is a forum. And uh, uh, as an organization, we think to use the organization of the dynamic coalitions of the IGF. And uh, this is uh, something uh, that uh, uh, I know that even in Africa and other regions, uh, there is uh, uh, the constitution of other local IGFs. And this was also supported and recommended by the, uh, Mr. Desai the chairman of this IGF. So uh, here you find uh, a number of uh, teams that we have been discussing while we assembled these people and created the uh, IGF Italy. So we have uh, access and equal opportunities for all, uh, broadband, multi-streaming, uh, 
then uh, security and trust. You can recognize here uh, the, the themes that are those that we discuss in, uh, in, in this uh, meeting of, of IGF. And uh, the idea of creating this local IGF is uh, uh, reflected in this motto. Think globally, act locally. So help uh, locally to do what the local internet community needs and asks for. Going ahead, we have uh, privacy protection. We have uh, education, spreading education, or alpha alphabetization, if you want, especially towards those that are not yet using the internet and then intellectual property protection, legal aspects, and this is very important, interaction with the legislator slash regulator. So there is very important that the national communities are able to interact with the government, with the regulator, in order that they may uh, act and make any kind of uh, decree or whatever only after listening to the community. And this, in some cases, is not the case. Sometimes even in Italy. And then, uh, of course, uh, very important is the cooperation, international cooperation with all the uh, uh, organization I mentioned here. I put ISOC on the top, uh, certainly ICANN, OECD, ITU, WIPO, and others. And then, being a researcher myself, of course, I just stress the need of uh, keeping contact with the research and the acad academic sector. Because when we want to look at the future, really, we need to have the contact with those that are studying the future of the internet also uh, 20 years ahead and so on, and to try to understand what is a reasonable connection between the internet of today and what could happen in the next five years, let's say. And then follow this process and be able with this community to uh, to, to make an analysis and then to transmit a message uh, for uh, the private sector and the government itself. So this is, uh, ends my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you, Stefano. Uh, The next speaker will be George um, Shadovsky, who would uh, talk about uh, Bulgaria. He will talk from manuscripts, and this is the picture I will have. But before he he's do his speech, this is the document I was talking about, which you can find there and take a copy of when you leave. So, George. Thank you, Austin showed you the picture of me because I'm fairly short and this table is fairly high and uh, so if you uh, can't see me just remember what the picture is like. Um, I'm also going to spare you PowerPoint. Uh, Vint Cerf, who is the, one of the fathers of the internet, has a saying. He says, uh, power corrupts and PowerPoint corrupts absolutely. And uh, I've often found that to be the case, so uh, I try to avoid it when I can. Uh, I'm going to uh, be representing Bulgaria here, and it's clear that I'm not Bulgarian. Uh, Veni Markowski, who was uh, scheduled to be here, uh, could not, and uh, uh, he has played a leading role in uh, building uh, the ISOC chapter and uh, ICT, ICT development in Bulgaria. Um, I am a member of the Bulgarian President's ICT Advisory Committee, and I've visited Bulgaria a number of times. Uh, the, I'm going to start this timer. I'm going to start a timer to uh, impose some discipline on myself here. <laughs> well, I can't do it. All right, five o'clock. Okay. I'll do it this way. Okay. Um, 
There are two parts to my presentation. Uh, I want to um, give you a specific example of ISOC activities, Internet Society activities in Bulgaria. Uh, they have an ambitious chapter with ambitious undertakings and uh, interesting results. And then I'd also like to give you some elements of a specific recipe on uh, how to take your country's internet further, uh, using the title of the, uh, of the session as uh, motivation. Um, I think the lesson of the Bulgarian chapter is that an involved chapter can really do great things. Um, they had some advantages. They formed their chapter early in the mid-1990s, and uh, the, uh, the Internet Society itself wasn't established until early 1992. Uh, they, uh, for example, uh, fought uh, a battle against ISP licensing. The government decided to license ISPs in the, in the mid-90s. Uh, there are reasons uh, that this is not a particularly good idea for Internet growth. They took on the, uh, the government. Uh, uh, they took it to Parliament and they won uh, that case. Uh, they took some acceptable risks when the Minister of State Administration uh, bought a lot of Microsoft software, uh, considerably more units than they had computers. Uh, the, uh, um, the, uh, the chapter went in, questioned it, uh, made uh, public announcements about it, and uh, eventually I think the uh, Minister of State Administration had to back off and renegotiate the, uh, the agreement with, with Microsoft. Recently, uh, they've organized a public debate on a new, uh, a new uh, law uh, which is being proposed on data retention and digital rights protection uh, in Bulgaria. They use a multi-stakeholder model. In the case of the data retention uh, issue, uh, they did a lot of research on um, the, the legal issues re uh, behind data retention and digital rights in Bulgaria in the non-internet world. Uh, they organized, a, they put them online. They organized a multi-sector roundtable. Uh, they then organized a task force of legal experts to look at what was coming out of the research in the roundtable. Uh, the material was given to the chapter. It was publicized, and there's an ongoing website uh, that tracks the, uh, pr the um, uh, passage of this particular legislation. Uh, they have been active on all significant policy issues that affect the internet and this is really amazing because they're, uh, this is a small country, uh, it's a country that, uh, was, that was penalized in part by being a part of the former Soviet Union but uh, nevertheless the chapter has been an, uh, active and very advanced uh, relative to others and very involved. Um, I think one of the lessons is that political involvement pays off. Uh in the 2001 election campaign, um, uh, Markovsky and the chapter organized the Bulgarian Internet Fiesta. And I was there as a trustee of the Internet Society at that time, along with another trustee, Rosa Delgado. Uh, the chapter got the president of the country to open the meeting. Afterwards, uh, we had a meeting with the prime minister in which the, uh, st the stress of the meeting was we've got to get the secondary schools networked because Bulgaria has to make an investment in its students. Uh, we then visited every the headquarters of every political party in Bulgaria, the major uh, parties, there are four of them, and we spent an hour, roughly an hour, in each party office. Uh, we stressed the importance of internet in the secondary schools, and um, Markovsky extracted a pledge from the leaders of every party if they won the election. Uh, that they would, in fact, follow up and they would do their best to uh, network all the secondary schools. Well, the Socialist Party was, uh, won the election and uh, Georgi Parvanov, uh, who was the leader of the party, became the president. Uh, and as a result of that, he formed an ICT advisory committee uh, for to advise him on, uh, uh, on issues regarding uh, networking, computing, uh, all the rest. Um, the... Um, Fiesta also uh, had a ceremony in which the president and the prime minister were made ISOC members. I don't think they knew it was happening, but they, it happened, and they were. Uh, it was explained to them what ISOC was and uh, uh, what ISOC was doing and the like. Uh, so after that, there, there have been other developments. The uh, members of the chapter have been working with parliamentarians. Some of them have testified before parliamentary committees. Uh, the ministers, uh, the appropriate ministers, have uh, are quite aware of uh, of what's going on, and uh, they they get advice from the from the chapter. Uh, the chapter was active in 
making its involvement, the involvement of the country in WISIS meaningful. They participated actively in supporting the WISIS process. Uh, more recently, Vint Cerf, was, uh, who's a member of the President's Advisory Committee, uh, went to Sofia to, uh, to get a medal uh, for his work in, his pioneering work in the internet, and that visit was used as a reason for discussions between the Prime Minister and Vint about internet policy in the country. Uh, and all of this indicates activity, uh, uh, concern with issues. Uh, the chapter is highly visible, uh, both in the public space and in the governmental space, and is regarded as a purveyor of, uh, uh, sorry, an unbiased purveyor of good information that the government needs. Now, having said that, uh, I'd like to go to two, uh, I think, two important general lessons that, that come out of this, and it responds to uh, the issue as well. If you want to grow your internet, uh, what do you do? And the first general lesson, which I'll expand on these in a moment, is policy matters, and it's a primary means of accelerating growth of the internet. And the second lesson is that organizations such as ISOC chapters, as, as well as other NGOs and organizations, can make a real difference, a major difference in the way in which the internet, in the speed and the way in which the internet expands uh, in, in countries. Now, with respect to policy, um, there, are, there are lots of things that uh, affect how the internet can be improved. Uh, but some things, there, there are limiting factors. There's the geography of the country, there's the literacy and its distribution in the country, there's the financial resources available to the country. All of these things are, are essentially in the short run a given. You can't change them. In the long run you can do a lot, but in the short run you're, you, 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 you get, you've got what you've got. Uh, on the other hand, policy, and by this I mean government policy, is totally locally controlled. And policy can be whatever the government and the people decide within limits uh, what it should be. Uh, and so um, th that those, the, the policy space contains the variables which allow you to uh, do good things with respect to internet growth. And I'd like to just uh, uh, mention a few of them. How am I doing on time? Oh, you're, you're okay, good. Five Thanks. Um, uh, I'd like to mention a number of them just to give you a sense of, uh, uh, of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot depends upon the recognition that ISPs and the private sector, the internet community, the, the internet industry in the country, however large or small, uh, those are the major en engines of growth of the internet. Uh, and the important thing is to let them do what they do best while controlling those things that they do badly. Uh, uh, so. One of the things that uh, the policy uh, components uh, one might look at is does, does the current government policy reward entrepreneurship? Uh, there are some interesting statistics uh, that the World Bank has collected on the number of days required to start a business in various countries. Uh, I can tell you that in Vietnam uh, that number is seven. Uh, in the last African country that I went to on mission, it was over 150. Uh, so there are major differences, and if it takes you 150 days to start a business, you probably don't start one. Uh, uh, is, uh, is the regulator in the telecom sector independent? Is it independent of the telco? Uh, is it independent of government? Uh, what is the state of telecom liberalization in the country? Uh, has demonopolization occurred? Is the uh, old telco, the old PTT, privatized or not? Um, what is the competition policy in the country? Are, are networks open to competitors? Is there a level playing field? Uh, can networks be treated uh, equally, no matter whether they're the old government network or whether they're new entrants into the market? Uh, can an ISP establish an international gateway, or does it have to go through a monopoly gateway? Um, can ISPs get together and form a cooperative internet exchange point? Internet exchange points, of course, are where ISPs cooperate and exchange local traffic locally so that it doesn't have to go out of the country to go across the street. And believe it or not, there is at least one country, I don't remember which one, in which uh, the formation of an IXP is prohibited by law because it is seen as collusion among uh, the, uh, the, the ISPs. This is, uh, uh, this is something which increases everybody's costs, and uh, there are a number of other issues. Uh, 
negative things uh, one can say about it, uh, but uh, it's there and it's bad policy for growing your internet. Um, our technical standards the one in the country, those that are accepted internationally, de facto or de jure, or is the government trying to create new standards which are not interoperable or compatible uh, with, uh, with international standards? Um, are, is the technical standardization process uh, slowing down entry of new products into the market? Uh, there was one, uh, just to, to show you how th this can be uh, fr um, uh, really destructive, uh, I visited a regulator in an African country in which the regulator had spent um, a number of weeks trying to determine whether a Nokia phone was acceptable for use with their local uh, cellular uh, operator. Uh, this should have taken about 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, uh, the, if, the, if this is the case with other products, you can see that getting products accepted into the market market for sale uh, is a long process that, uh, that really doesn't help uh, the expansion of any telecommunications service. Um, is, um, is the government taking steps to promote local useful content in the local language? Um, are uh, digital contracts uh, recognized as legal instruments? Uh, or do you have to go back to paper and signatures in order to, uh, in order to have business transactions? Uh, with respect to ISP liability, is, are ISPs responsible for the content in which they, uh, uh, which they transmit? If so, uh, you will not have many ISPs working in the country. Um, the, uh, the, the point here is all of this policy is locally made. Uh, and it, it appears in legislation, in regulation, in business practices, etc., and uh, it can be changed. Uh, good policy allows the internet to spread quickly. Bad policy can inhibit internet growth uh, uh, significantly. And if you'd like to look at a website that has uh, an expansion of this, you could look at uh, internetpolicy.net, uh, which has uh, more discussion about these items. There is a corollary here, which um, I think is um, worth pointing out in this IGF context, that um, in terms of internet governance and the role of policy, uh, probably 90% of internet governance is national in scope and not international. And if that's the case, if, that, if you agree with me on that, uh, internet governance needs to focus strongly upon national policies and their role in uh, governing the internet. So the, the general lesson here, the second general lesson, is that ISOC chapters, as well as similar organizations, can make a big difference. And ISOC Bulgaria provides very strong evidence of this. Uh, they became involved, uh, and they worked for change. They had a sense of mission. They had a clear idea of what constituted desirable outcomes. They had champions, and they had followers who were willing to support the champions. They made early and strategic interventions into the policy process. Uh, the involvement that they had was sustained, and it went from significant issue to significant issue. Uh, they worked for visibility in both the political and the public spaces, and they were willing to take acceptable risks. So ISOC chapters, I think are, are an excellent vehicle for making reform happen. They're politically neutral internationally, which is very helpful. Uh, the, the, the motto of the society, the internet is for everyone, is uh, in general taken without question as, as a good thing. Uh, the chapters are nationally based, or in some cases subnationally based, and that matches the issues because most of the issues are nationally determined. Uh, and uh, so the chapters are, have uh, a good sense of what they are and are able to address them. Uh, the members of the chapter, just by virtue of having joined and being involved, are very likely to be aware of those issues and involved in some aspect of them, one way or the other. And the members are likely to have professional stature 
and respect in the community. So they're, they're extraordinarily good vehicles, and I think that Bulgaria exemplifies this, uh, as well as some of the other things you're hearing from the other speakers and uh, of chapters who aren't represented here. So my message to you if, uh, 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 is if, if, there, if there is a, um, an exhortation to come out of this is get involved. Uh, if you have an ISOC chapter and you want to uh, make the internet available for everyone, uh, get involved and uh, help your chapter do it. Thank you. Yeah, very good. come up and assist and the next the next speaker is uh, Anita Sanchez uh, together with uh, with um, Sebastian Gelabamba I will just get the pictures out Buenas tardes uh, Would you be sitting there or would you want to stay here I'm from Ecuador the floor is yours. Buenas tardes. ISOC Capítulo Ecuador empieza la fase de inclusión digital desde el 2000 al 2007. The uh, Ecuadorian chapter of ISOC begins the uh, inclusion, digital inclusion phase from 2000 to 2007. El objetivo es dar a conocer el Internet. En un principio, en las principales ciudades como Quito, Guayaquil, Cuenca y Loja, se crea un grupo de voluntarios para impulsar el Internet. To promote the Internet in, in the beginning uh, in the main cities of Ecuador, like Quito, Guayaquil, Cuenca and Loja, uh, they create a group of volunteers to uh, promote the Internet. Uh, some forums were created and the universities, students and uh, trade associations were invited to, to, to get involved. Se capacita a profesores de escuelas y colegios y a, los, y a los alumnos en el manejo de internet y sus usos. Schools, teachers and, and alumni were uh, trained on the use and, uh, of the internet. Los jóvenes lideran la capacitación en plazas públicas a la salida del trolebús en las cárceles de mujeres, creando así una masa de internet. Uh, young people lead the um, training in public squares, uh, the um, buses, public buses, in uh, women jails, and um, creating and in that way an internet critical mass of users. Se entrega en escuelas, comunidades, sitios rurales, material didáctico en un lenguaje sencillo que llega a grandes y chicos. Um, some uh, didactic material is delivered in schools, uh, small communities, rural sites, uh, and uh, addressed to grown-ups and children. Es importante destacar que en el año 2002 se crea la Ley de Comercio Electrónico y se lo aprueba. In 2002, in 2002 uh, there is a, a new law was promulgated in, in Ecuador uh, on uh, electronic commerce. En la fase 2, que iniciamos en el 2007 al 2009, en esta fase nos encontramos desarrollando actividades apoyadas por ISOC, dirigidas a la población que use la red con fines específicos como consulta, educación y negocios. In the second phase of the chapter, in which we are now since 2007, um, we are developing uh, with the um, support of ISOC uh, several uh, several uh, um, activities regarded to the, that the population, learning the, the population to learn the internet and to use it specifically for education and business. Además, es importante cambiar el paradigma de los jóvenes que dicen que internet es chatear, por internet es para todos. It is important to shift the paradigm, uh, mostly in the youth, in the youth people, in the young people, sorry, uh, where the the paradigm, the current paradigm is internet is equal to chat. For internet is for everyone. 
En este trabajo nos vemos apoyados por políticas que han adoptado instituciones como la aduana, el servicio de rentas internas, seguridad social. Estas instituciones se han sistematizado de tal manera que han llevado a la población a que se dirijan a realizar los trámites y consultas en línea. In this task, we are supported by several uh, institutions like uh, the Customs Service, the Internal Revenue Service, the Social Security Service. These institutions and, uh, have uh, systematized the, uh, the, um, their work in a way that the population uses the, net, the network to, re to uh, go ahead with uh, their own works with these institutions. Estamos convencidos que si la población comienza a ser un ente activo, el gobierno mejorará las diferencias existentes de infraestructura y políticas, y las empresas de servicio mejorarán sus costos. We are convinced that if uh, the population of Ecuador begins to be an active entity, the government will um, will be better off in, in setting the differences that we have in infrastructure policies and the service companies, the public, the public, the public companies will uh, improve their, their uh, prices. Estamos satisfechos con el trabajo que realizamos como ISOC Ecuador. Tenemos estadísticas que el 15% de la población tiene acceso al internet desde su casa u oficinas. El 1% tiene un canal dedicado y el 15% de la población se comunica desde cibercafé, entidades educativas, consejos provinciales y cabinas comunitarias. We are very pleased with the work we've done uh, from ISOC Ecuador. Uh, our statistics says that 15% of the Ecuadorian people have access the internet from home or office. 1% has a broadband access. 15% uses um, services like um, uh, cyber cafes or uh, educational entities or community, community access services. Miramos con preocupación cómo se relegan a otras culturas este acceso por la falta de un idioma como a la cultura quichua, que son analfabetos y ahora son analfabetos informáticos. Hay que tomar medidas para apoyar a comunidades para que se minimice esta brecha digital. Alguna de ellas, con el apoyo de comunidades europeas, tiene su página web en idioma francés e inglés, no en español. We are worried about the situation of, uh, in which some other cultures are being relegated uh, because of the lack of the language uh, as the Quechua, an indigenous culture, that they are already illiterate and now are digitally illiterate. Um, we have to take measures in order to support these communities to minimize this digital divide. Uh, some of these cultures, uh, some of these, me sorry, these measures, with the uh, support of uh, the European communities, which, uh, for instance, have their web page in French, in English, but not in Spanish. En la fase 3, es importante en esta fase desarrollar normas y regulaciones en el uso de la red. Se debe capacitar a los profesionales, estudiantes y niños que son los más vulnerables. In the third phase, in this phase it's important to develop uh, regulations and norms in the use of the internet. We have to, cap to uh, train professors, students and kids, which are the most uh, vulnerable ones. Se debe a, a realizar alianzas con la sociedad, Ministerio de Seguridad, crear peritos capaces de identificar estos ataques informáticos. We have to ally with the, the society, the uh, security ministry, uh, in, in order to create um, pro, um, proficient professionals in order to identify these uh, inf in, this, uh, computer attacks. Promover el uso eh, y buenas prácticas de Internet. Ixop Capítulo Ecuador promueve los mejores sitios en Internet desde hace cinco años en las líneas de educación, gobierno y empresarial. En la tercera fase, vamos a promover el buen uso y las buenas prácticas en Internet. El Ecuador Chapter de uh, ISOC 
promotes the best sites of the internet in Ecuador since uh, for, from the last five years uh, in the um, in education, government, and business. Isoc fue invitado a formar parte de la mesa de trabajo de las tecnologías de la información y comunicación en la constituyente, logrando institucionar un decreto en donde se decreta que las tecnologías de la información y comunicación es un derecho del ciudadano. Este decreto fue firmado electrónicamente por el actual presidente Rafael Correa. ISOC Ecuador was invited to be a part of the uh, working group on information technologies, uh, communication and information technologies in the, um, uh, the process that, that uh, set up a new constitution for Ecuador. And they made um, a new presidential decree, they, they accomplished to, to have a, a new presidential decree in which uh, the ICTs are a right of the citizen. Uh, and this decree was electronically signed by the actual, the current president, Rafael Correa. El gobierno está consciente de los ahorros sustanciales que se tiene con el uso de las TICs. Por eso se crea el portal Compas Públicas para transparentar el proceso de compras de gobierno. Uh, the Ecuadorian government is conscious of the uh, uh, savings that the use of T ICTs in, in e-procurement can accomplish. So that, that's why they set up a por uh, 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 an e-procurement portal called Compras Públicas, which is public purchases. En respuesta a las necesidades de los empresarios, se presenta el proyecto de factura electrónica para la comunidad de empresarios para optimizar procesos y los actores son pymes, contribuyentes especiales y el gobierno. Pymes, pequeñas empresas familiares, eh, pocos tecnificadas, contribuyentes especiados listos para realizar alianzas y gobierno como ente de políticas y estándares. Este proyecto tiene una duración de 18 meses, involucra 250 pymes, 50 contribuyentes especiales con un costo de 500 mil dólares, financiados por el BID. This, uh, there is a project on uh, electronic billing for the uh, business community. Uh, in order to optimize the process and the players for this uh, project, which is a trial for this electronic building, are um, SMEs and uh, special SMEs and government, special uh, familiar SMEs with uh, less uh, digital knowledge. Um, some uh, Small companies which are ready to, to make uh, corporate al alliances and the government itself. This project has a um, duration of 18 months and it uh, involves 250 SMEs and 50 special cases with a, with a, um, uh, the uh, the BI the B is a bank interamerican. Sí. Uh, it's uh, the Interamerican Development Bank uh, supported uh, with uh, five hundred thousand dollars this project. Gracias por su atención. Les esperamos en Ecuador, Nucan Nucanchica, Ecuador.